Welcome to the Three Trees Project. I will begin using my 2B pencil and I will quickly lay out the design. And as I've mentioned before, I will include all of these templates in the resource assets. So be sure to download those so you can easily paint along with me or at your own convenience. The beauty of this simple landscape is that we're going to focus on some simple variegated washes. You remember those from the common washes lesson, and now we can put those ideas to work. Using my large mop brush, I'm going to mix up a tea mixture of ultramarine blue and a little bit of cerulean blue, and obviously working the wash from the top to the bottom. Important to try to um, join each main stroke at the bottom of the wash and eventually I'm going to mix in a little bit of alizarin crimson. Um, I will tell you that alizarin crimson is a very intense color. Um, you have to water that down quite a bit. So once I get this wash to the bottom I will do a little mix of both the blue and the alizarin crimson and at the very top of the blue I want to make a gradation so it's a little bit darker towards the top of the sky and then lighter as we get down towards the middle and now the key here is to let it dry but I'm going to leave it propped like this to encourage the wash to run down now it's 100% dry and I'm going to switch to my number eight pointed around um, I'm going to use the side of my brush for most of the tree foliage. And of course, you may remember we covered that in the brushwork lesson. So you can use the tip of the brush, the side of the brush, different areas of the bristles to create a certain effect. For my green, I'm using cerulean and a little bit of the cadmium yellow lemon. But I'm also mixing in some ultramarine and burnt sienna uh, because I want the green to be a little bit on the brown side. So I don't want a pure bright green. And I also need the value of the green to be slightly darker. And to do that, I'm going to add a little bit of cad red light. Cad red light will immediately make that green a little bit darker and a little bit grayer. Now you can see that's a little bit too pale for what I need. I'm going to go into my neutral tint, which is a good color for graying it out, but also to add a little bit of value to it. So uh, the leaves need to stand out against that blue sky. If it's too pale, then it's just not going to make enough impact. And because the trees are the main focal point, um, they need to uh, be done well. So again, uh, getting a value that is the right uh, kind of darkness is key to making this piece work. Here you can see me exploit the side of the brush a little bit. And the beauty of using the side of that brush is it's going to give you more uh, of an, a less predictable stroke. And that way you know, you get some interesting foliage and shapes versus things that are too predictable. I did put a little bit of burnt sienna into that green, and that's going to make it a little bit darker, but it's also going to brown it out a little bit. And now that I've got the base green and hue for the leaves, I'm going to go back in with some darker values. Remember, working wet into wet can be a little bit risky. So you have to get your timing right. Also lifting paint, which is what I'm doing here, is all about timing. And as you're putting this wash down, it's a good time to do that. If I wait a little bit too long, um, it could easily ruin the wash and I'll end up with the cauliflowers and the watermarks. Now I'm going to go with something uh, a little bit on the brown side or tan. So I use yellow ochre and a touch of the red. Uh, that was cad red light. And I'm going to obviously paint the ground plane. So getting a little more sienna, a little more yellow ochre now, because I feel that wash 
is a little bit too pale. So I want to push that more towards a milk consistency so that it stands out a little bit. The ground plane is important. It's going to anchor the piece. So if the ground is too light in value, it just won't have enough there to make it believable. And now that the foliage is starting to dry a little bit, but again, it's not too dry, I can drop a little bit of color into that. And that's just going to help create a little bit of variation. Now I'm going to add a little bit of a dark value there to the ground plane, and that's going to break it up. But it's also going to suggest shadows under the trees. This is only the second layer, and there will be a third. But the key with this layer is to make sure I get some variation. So I don't want the trees or the foliage in the trees. I don't want the ground plane to be a flat wash. So that's why I'm mixing up a little bit of different earth tones. And now I'm mixing up a little bit different green. And I'm going to drop that into the foliage. And that way when it dries, it'll have a little more interest to it. So now I'm 100% dry. I've got complete control over the colors and the washes again. And I'm going to use my sword brush and create the trunks for the trees. As you remember, the sword brush is pretty interesting because you can get some unpredictable strokes. And I think for tree trunks, it's a good brush to use because tree trunks are very abstract. They are nothing more than a line, but the line is often uh, has kinks in it and very subtle angles. So it's not just a straight, boring line. So I've got a slightly darker value there for the trunk on the right. And now I want some variation. So I'm making the next trunk a little bit leaner. So you don't want all of the trunks to be the same. So symmetry and it just doesn't work well with uh, painting and you always want variety. So the more variety you can have in your subjects, uh, the more interest you're going to get from the end results. Now I'm using the tip of the brush. And I know my hand is in the way. I have to apologize for that. But uh, this is where you I only want to use the very tip of my sword brush. And that's going to give me these really thin, faint lines, which works well for some of the branch work. Now I can use my towel, and that is dry, and it is clean, to just touch into those trunks. And that's going to break up the line a little bit, and will add a little bit of variation to the overall transparency of it. Here I will strengthen the shadow a little bit, and that's working pretty well. Um, again, this is just a dry brush, so I'm just moving that wash around a little bit, trying to get a little bit of texture going. And that's looking good, but I feel like a little bit of red in there would just kind of pop the focal point a little bit and just bring a, a little more color and excitement to the piece. So all in all, this is coming together, as you can see, pretty quickly. Um, this is just a wet brush with no color and I'm just touching that into the wash while it's wet to encourage it to run a little bit. That was just a little bit of green I splashed into it. And so again, that's just going to indicate shadows and make a little interest in the, in the focal point and in the foreground. Um, I have some trees and, or shrubs and bushes in the very back. I can use a very uh, thin tea-like mixture to indicate those and maybe you know hit it again towards the bottom and the base just to indicate some shadows and some um, a cast shadow and that should work pretty good so that is a good way and a good project to exploit variegated washes also working wet into wet uh, using layers building up the painting from thin to thick and hopefully you enjoy the project. So there it is. Uh, that photo was taken in natural light, so you get a better feel for the colors.